So in 4.3 today, um, we are going to chat a little bit more about the derivative of e. So we've already kind of seen um, what happens with e, and in the last section we talked about how the derivative of just e itself, this is the best derivative because it's so easy, um, the derivative of e is just e. So now what we want to look at is, well, what happens if I raise e to something other than just x? Okay, so basically what we're going to look at here is the chain rule for exponential functions, okay, or this the exponential function e. Um, so the chain rule, again, happens when we have a composition of functions. So for example, if I take e and I raise it maybe to x squared plus 1, if you look at that, that's a composition of functions. I could think of this as e to the u, where u is x squared plus 1. So we need to do the chain rule when we take a derivative of something like this. So let's say I Let's look at two notations here. So let's kind of go to the one notation where we take the derivative of my outside function and then my inside function, okay? So in this case, when you're dealing with e raised to something other than x, your e is actually going to be your outside function, just like we saw over here, right? My e to the u is my outside function, and then my inside function is going to be the actual exponent that e is being raised to. So, for example, in this case over here, what I would do is I'd take the derivative of the outside function, which would just be e to the u, and then the chain rule tells me you must multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So when we take derivative, the derivative of e using the chain rule, what you want to do is you just want to rewrite it. So this is e to the g of x. That is the derivative of e your outside function, and if you could see me right now, I'm making little quotation marks. Um, that's my outside function. E is my outside function because if you look at the composition, the inside would be the exponent. So what's the derivative of E? It's just E, so this is the outside function, right, evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside, where my outside function, again, is E, so what do I just need to multiply by here? The derivative of the inside. Or, as we've seen before, the example kind of up in the corner there that I was just talking about, if I have e to the u, where u is some function of x, then how, what would the derivative be? It would be e to the u times du dx. So that's what I get from this du dx. So if we were, we'll do some examples, but for this guy right here, I would have e to the u times 2x, and then if I want to replace that u so that my final answer is everything in terms of x, and I like to put the 2x out front, I would get 2x e to the x squared plus 1. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at some examples here. Uh, even though I just messed up my... So I just want to find derivatives. Oh, purple, let's do purple. Find the first derivative. Wow, this is a little crazy, doing a different color of each function, okay? So part A, let's, let's just start off kind of simple. What if we had e to the 5x plus e to the 4x minus 1? Okay, so if I want to take the derivative, I think I'm going back to green. I don't think I like the purple of the whole time. If I want to take the derivative of this, again, I just rewrite e, that's the outside function, and then I multiply by the derivative of the exponent, and the derivative of 5, 5x is 5. Again, rewrite e, and then multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which is 4. So we get 5 e to the 5x. I like to clean this up a little bit. I always like to put my constants and stuff in front. You know, I don't know. It's just habit, I suppose. And this is my derivative. 5 e to the 5x plus 4 e to the 4x. I'm going back to green. I don't know why I like the green better. Um, I hope that makes sense. Let's look, let's look at another one that might be a little bit more interesting. So what if we had something like y equals x cubed e to the x squared, okay? So in this case, as I'm sure you know, we're going to do the product rule because I have one function times another function. So the product rule, if you're having any trouble with the product rule, please let me know. Remember, we leave the first, so that would be x cubed times the derivative of the second. So I'm going to rewrite it. There's the derivative of the outside 
times the derivative of the inside derivative of x squared is 2x. A lot of times when you get good at these and you get used to doing these, you would just put the 2x in front, but we don't have to do that right now. So leave the first times the derivative of the second plus leave the second times the derivative of the first, and let's see if we can simplify this at all. So we get y primed equals 2x to the fourth e to the x squared plus 3x squared e to the x squared. So I am going to simplify this just a little bit. I'm going to take out um, an x squared and I'm going to take out an e to the x squared. Why? Why? Well, a lot of times, um, this is just practicing, this is just practicing being able to take the derivative, but what do we use the derivative for, right? A lot of times we're going to use it for finding maximums or minimums, finding rates of change, especially if we're finding maximums and minimums. I'm going to be setting this sucker equal to zero, and so I would want to make sure that I factor this so that I can set it equal to zero and see where my critical points are. Um, let's look at, let's do another one. So we'll just clear this one really quick. Um, how about find the equation of the tangent line? And there is an example of a second derivative test on the fun sheet. So make sure you're doing the fun sheet, okay? Um, equation of the tangent line to the graph of y equals, um, let's do e to the 6, oh, that's not going to work. Let's do e to the 6x all over 4 plus e to the 6x at x equals 0. Okay? So I want to find the equation of the tangent line. What do we need to find the equation of the tangent line? We need to find its slope, right? Because I need a slope and a point for a line. So y primed, we're going to do a little bit of quotient rule, nothing like a little bit of quotient rule in the morning. It's morning for me. I'm not sure when you're going to listen, watch this. But um, down, so there's my down. d up would give me e to the 6x times 6. So I'm just going to write 6e to the 6x, that's the derivative of the outside, times the derivative of the exponent. Down d up minus up, and then d down, well again, would be 6e to the 6x, the 4 goes to 0, all over, whoa, shouldn't have tried to do that on my own. <laughs> all over, down, down, right? Or double down, as one of my students said in my face-to-face -face class, which I liked. So let's see what happens here. So we get, um, I'm going to distribute the 6 e to the 6x, so I would get 24 plus 6 e to the 12x. Remember, we add exponents when we multiply like bases, and then minus 6 e to the 12x all over this stuff squared. And again, I want to simplify all this because I'm going to be plugging in, you know, a, a value for x, so I want to make sure that when I do that, you know, the probability of me making a mistake goes down if I get it in its completely simplified form. So that's 4 plus e to the 6x quantity squared. Cool. That was kind of nice. These two just canceled. So now where do I actually want the derivative at? I want y primed evaluated at 0. So I have 24 all over 4 plus e to the 0, e to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1, right? You remember that. So I get 24 over 5 squared, which is 25. So I know that's my slope. What else do I need to find? Well, when y, x is 0, I need to find my y. So if y is 0, I'm going to plug 0 in. e to the 0 is 1. Again, e to the 0 is 1 right here, so I get 4 plus 1, which is 5. So what is my solution? y minus 1 fifth equals my slope, which is 24 twenty fifths times x minus 0. And I'm not going to leave a, I wouldn't, this is just kind of nice to take that 24 twenty fifths x through and then add the 1 fifth to both sides. All right, I hope that makes sense.
Um, let's, the last thing I want to talk about is something in, in the section, um, on page 237, and it has to deal with, um, ease that involve this 6x right here, okay, and this idea of solutions to what we call a differential equation. And what a differential equation is, a differential equation is just an equation, um, a differential equation is an equation that involves a derivative. So on, on page 230, well, first of all, what we want to do is let's consider the function. Oh, I'm in purple again. Oh, not like purple, but um, let's look at taking the derivative of something like this, where c and k are constants. We will see later on why this, why we are interested in this type of exponential equation. Um, but for right now, let's just kind of look at it, and then later on we'll actually do some stuff with it. So let's find y primed. So y primed equals, c is just a constant, so I'm just going to leave that there. And then e to the kx, that's the derivative of the outside, now times the derivative of the exponent would just be k. So the interesting thing about an exponential function, and if you ever decide just to, I don't know, get crazy, and move on to differential equations someday. We talk about this quite a bit in differential equations. Look at how I can rewrite this. So I just move this k over, and I just group the c and the e to the kx to itself. And if you notice up here, what is c e to the kx? That actually is just y. So this guy right here is actually just y. That was my original function they started with. And so what do we see? We see that y primed then equals k times y. This is what we call a differential equation because it involves a derivative. And the interesting thing about this differential equation, okay, this is on page 237, so you can copy this out of the book maybe in a little in a nicer way, is that the function, which we saw up here, y equals c e to the kx is a solution. And you should be having this, you should have this in your notes from copying that box. Um, so this is kind of interesting because what this tells us is the rate of change of my function is proportional to the function itself. And that makes a little sense. We'll talk about this later, but if you think about a population, right? The rate of change of that population depends on how many people you have. That's how you're going to reproduce and get more people or whatever we're talking about, bacteria. The rate of change of my bacteria would be proportional to the amount of bacteria I actually have present. We'll deal with that a little bit more, um, but I just want to do one example and then I think I'll be done with this. So I'm just going to do one of the examples from your suggested homework problems. Um, it says, determine all functions um, y equals f of x such that all functions y such that. And then what they're just kind of getting you to practice is y primed equals a negative 0.5 of y. And they want to tell you one other thing. They want to tell you that y of 0 is 1. So they're actually looking for the specific function here. So what do I know? Well, let's, oh, I just erased it. <laughs> I know that y equals c e to the k t is a solution of y primed equals k times y. That's what we found. So look at this. What this is telling us then, what this implies, that's what that arrow means is that k equals a negative 0 0.5, okay? So look at what I know my, my function then, y, is going to be of the form c e to the negative 0 0.5 t. Uh, x, I'm so sorry, I'm using t's because later on we're going to use t's. This should be x's. Ooh, I wonder if I did that. I may have done that back there. Sorry about that. 
x's, t's, whatever. So look, we know all, so all functions, this is the, all the functions that would satisfy this equation right here. So the reason they give us some more information, the reason they tell us that y of 0 equals 1 is that if they want us to find c. So if I know that y of 0 equals 1, that tells me that c e to the 0, right, because 0 times 0.5 is 0, must equal 1. Well, what does this imply then? e to the 0 is 1, so that tells me that c is equal to 1, because that just goes to 1. So what is my final answer? y equals 1 e to the, and I don't write that, of course, negative 0.5x. And that's my answer. That is the function. That's all functions that satisfy that. If they hadn't given us this, this is what we call an initial condition. If they hadn't given us the initial condition, I would have had quite a few more solutions. I would have had an infinite number of solutions by this guy right here. All right, I hope that makes sense. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad of a section. Please let me know if you have any questions.